Is the spirit realm real? Welcome back to another Truth Matters podcast episode where we are speaking the truth while it's still legal. Thanks for tuning in. Sit back, relax, and get ready to hear the truth. I'm your host, Matt Franklin. Hello, guys, and here we are again with another Truth Matters podcast, episode 80. I love that number. Uh, Eight, as some of you may know, is representative of a new day. And so I'm believing for you that as you listen to this podcast episode, you'll have a new understanding and perception, a new outlook on life, and you will have a new day. just want to speak that blessing over you today. So today I want to talk about a very real but a a very touchy subject that uh, a lot of modern-day churches don't like to talk about, and that is the spirit realm. Is the spirit realm real? Are there really angels and demons? Are there really uh, spiritual forces at work as we speak? Are we really in a spiritual warfare, or is this just a common mental state of mind that when you give your heart to the Lord, it's basically a mental dedication to the Lord, and you just simply do everything by physical emotion and your own free will, and there's no spiritual forces whatsoever working behind the scenes. If you do not believe there is a spiritual warfare going on, you are not in a good position as a child of God, because first of all, if you have truly given your heart to God, Satan hates you. He despises you. He hates everyone that God created, but he especially hates those that have given their hearts to him. And the Bible says those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And it's very important for us to understand that if we're going to give our lives to God, we must be willing to be led by his Spirit. And there are times when God will lead us away from a trap that the enemy has very much set for us to destroy, to disrupt, to disturb our purpose, and to frustrate our purpose, because the enemy is after your soul. Ephesians 5 and 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, let me ask you, why would you need to put armor on if you weren't in a fight, if you weren't in a spiritual war? It goes on to say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not your brother you're against. It's not the sinner you're against. It's not the person that disagrees with you. It's not a man or a woman. It's not a person that you're against, but it is a spirit being. It goes on to say, but against spirit, or against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And listen here, not only should you put the armor on, not only should you know what each piece of armor is, but Verse 18, sometimes we miss that part. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Not just a flesh thing, not just speaking words, not just uh, quoting uh, quotes, not just reading a book, not just uh, reading a list of prayers, but it is a spiritual warfare. Praying in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 
This is, in fact, a spiritual war that we are in. And if you are not armored up, if you are not prayed up, if you are not studied up in the Word of God, you will fall. You will lose some battles. And God forbid you will lose the war if you are not prepared for this fight that you are in. This episode is not to scare you. This episode is not to put fear in you, but this episode is to challenge you and to awaken you to the reality of who you really are. The spiritual realm is more real than the natural realm. That's hard to believe, isn't it? But before the natural realm came to be, there was the spiritual realm. God is a spirit. The Bible says He is a spirit. And those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And before this world was, God was. He created the world. So everything in the natural came from the spirit realm. And at one time, there was a spiritual being by the name of Lucifer. And there still is. But he was the head worship leader of heaven. And the Bible says iniquity was found in him. And he began looking at himself and thinking to himself, I'm more beautiful than God. I'm more powerful than God. I can take God. I can I can defeat God and I can take his throne and I can take over all of heaven and I can become God. And so he convinced one third of the heavenly angels, spirit beings, to turn on God in an effort to try to defeat him and dethrone him and to enthrone Lucifer, otherwise known as Satan, to become God. And the Bible says that when Satan and his deceived angels tried to take over the throne of God, Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from the heavens at 740 miles an hour. (laughs) God kicked him out of heaven so fast, it was the speed of lightning. Satan is still at work today because he lost that first battle. And so, Now this is his second chance to try to take over heaven. And so he's using every ounce of strength, every tool, every weapon, every arsenal that he has to try to disrupt and destroy God's people. And as long as you claim the name of Christ, you are a target for the enemy. You are a high-value target for the enemy. And he wants to destroy your life. So I want to encourage you today to be in prayer to be in prayer and supplication in the Spirit for yourself, for your family, for your friends, for your neighborhood, for your community, for your church, for your pastor, because the enemy knows if he can destroy the priests of the home, which is you, Dad, if he can destroy the pastors of the churches, he can destroy the church. If he can cause God's people to be in division all the time, arguing and bickering and bitter toward one another and gossiping about one another and putting one another down and pointing the finger and judging and criticizing and condemning. If Satan can do this, his job is to to divide and conquer. He cannot conquer a unified body. He cannot conquer a community of people who are bound together in love and in unity and running after God and and on a mission for God. He cannot stop a determined people. The Bible talks about when the people tried to build the Tower of Babel to heaven. God looked down and he said to the angels, he said, we must go down and stop them from doing this because nothing will be withheld from them because of their determination, because of their unity. And so God came down and he confused their languages. That's why we have different languages today. They were of one language. But when God came down, He, the one thing that he used to divide them was confuse their languages. And the enemy doesn't have any original ideas, but he is a copycat. And he's using that idea today to confuse 
the body of Christ to confuse the languages, to get this clique over here thinking this way, this clique over here thinking this way, to get this person uh, to believe this and this person to believe that. But if we'll all come together and if we'll all read the Bible, the King James Version Bible, if we will all get down and study the Word of God and cover it with prayer and sincerity and humility, if we'll all focus on the rule book, the playbook, if you will, the battle plans that God has laid out in His precious Word, if we will learn the Word of God, if we will stick together, if we will come together like never before and pray together, the Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. And how many can be put to flight if we all come together? If we can do that, we will be a powerful unit that the enemy cannot destroy. Jesus himself said to Peter, when Peter confessed that Jesus was the Son of God, Jesus said, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. He said, Upon this rock, upon this understanding, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That very statement lets us know that the gates of hell are against us. The powers of hell are constantly at work against God's people. And how much the more do we need to be in prayer? Do we need to be on guard? Do we need to have our armor on? Do we need to focus on God, focus on God and His Word? and be awake to the spiritual things of God. The Bible says, having your senses exercised to discern between good and evil. Your spiritual senses. If you lost your sense of smell, you wouldn't enjoy certain foods like you used to. Probably most foods or drinks you wouldn't enjoy like you used to if you lost your sense of smell and your sense of taste. If you lost your sense of hearing, you wouldn't enjoy some of the things in life. If you lost your sense of sight, you wouldn't be able to enjoy the beauties that God has presented before you of His creation. And the same is true in the spirit realm. If you don't have your senses sharpened, if they're not awakened to the things of God, how can you know what's really going on behind the scenes? When you go through battles and you're not spiritually awake, you don't really know how to fight that battle because you're blaming a person or you're blaming God, or you're blaming the circumstance when in reality there is spiritual beings trying to disrupt your purpose. Folks, we need to wake up and we need to understand that we are, in fact, in a spiritual warfare and there is truly a spiritual realm. I leave you with this scripture, 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 9. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Even then, when this scripture was written, the spirit of iniquity was already at work. Satan the spiritual realm of wickedness. Take heart today and know if you are saved, you are on the winning side. You have God. You have Jesus who overcame death, hell, and the grave. The Bible says you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You have all of heaven working for you, and you have Jesus inside of you. Be strong. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou wert called and hast professed a good profession. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends so that we can get the truth out. Have a great day, 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 day. <laughs>